Hi everyone, it is December 15, 2017. Uh, this is the fire update with the information, the best information, the most recent information that I could find. I'll start with the South Dakota fire, which is 80% contained. This is in Custer County. No mandatory evacuations and evacuations orders have been lifted. That's good news, right? Is it good news for California? Unfortunately not. Not. This is the current National Fire Advisory and they have stretched the advisory to Northern California. And the advisory that I showed just a couple of days ago that was pretty much in uh, all of these states right here Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, um, Oklahoma, gone. Which was kind of swift. So it was the winds. They're claiming that wind now causes fire. No joke. Today I saw mainstream media the culprit of the California fires, the winds. So, this is the Thomas fire in Deep Red and all of these areas of California, which includes, I believe, the Santa Rosa area. I'm not sure. I don't know the boundaries of the counties, but red flag warnings. That's right, Santa Ana winds continue. I want to show you what appears to be a frequency being set off right up here in this area. You'll see it right there. One more time. Right there. So, um, is that a frequency being set off? One of my earlier California fire videos, I showed right here this morphed composite, a frequency that was clear being set off right in this area. And then you had all of the high winds, but um, I will show you videos that I hope that everybody watches and circulates of one Pacific Redwood. He posting a video, I guess, yesterday showing how they are controlling the jet stream, causing low pressure, high pressure. All of this affects wind. So here, the National Mosaic. Well, this is the first time that I've seen the National Mosaic with so many um, areas of precipitation that are, yeah, squared off. Ultra low frequencies clear in this precipitation, which is up here in, you got it, Northern California. But it's obvious that frequencies are being used because Mother Nature does not work in uh, defined lines like this. But these defined lines are kind of straight across the board here. The ultra low frequencies, you can see if you look closely the cuts in the precipitation. And this one is not, this one is clearly a very uh, sustained ultra low frequency cutting through right here in northern. California, the red flag warnings area, in telecast. 
quite obvious frequency is being set off. Northern California. Yep. Mother Nature does not do this. Microwave frequencies, ultra low frequencies. That's what does this. You're being attacked. You're being attacked in California. It's obvious. San Diego. To be on fire. This is the headline. Three hours ago. San Diego to be on fire. Weather warning Sunday. Um, you know what this reads? It reads San Diego to be on fire. Comma. Weather warning. I mean, considering the fires that are going on in California, that this uh, NBC 7 San Diego, that they could have headlined an article like this, is really, well, I think it's very telling. San Diego, you are not out of the woods at all. At all. But I want you to listen to this. So watch your own son get shocked, right? Yeah, yeah everybody's saying. I had a viewer write me and say, I've been shocking my baby by accident every time I go to pick him up, and he's so mad at me now. So here's what it is. You're not alone. We're all experiencing the static electricity and the shock. So let's explain how this applies and why we're getting this from our weather. Now, every object has a degree of energy in it, right? So when objects touch each other, they transfer the energy, okay? Now, when we have humidity in the air, it acts as like a barrier where it kind of breaks apart that energy before you touch each other. With the dryness in our air, it's not doing that. So when you touch something, there's a transfer of energy. You're getting it in a zap, and that's called the triboelectric effect. Tribo um, the microwave frequencies actually cause the air to be static. And many of you have left comments about the static electricity that you are experiencing in your homes and you don't have to be in San Diego to experience it. That when you touch your dogs or you touch something you're getting shocked. It's from the frequencies. Triboelectric effect. We're all energy? No, we are all electromagnetic beings. That's what she should have said. Electromagnetic beings. But if mainstream media reporters actually said electromagnetic beings, well, that would be information that you would think that Americans would go, wow, I'm an electromagnetic being. Hmm. And these electromagnetic frequencies that we are saturated in, well, nah, scratch that. They wouldn't think that. They don't think. So Ventura County Fire just posted this on their Twitter account. Persistent Santa Ana Wind event challenges Thomas firefighters. And I got this off Google when it said only three minutes ago. So it's about half hour, 40 minutes. Persistent Santa Ana winds. That's right, Santa Ana winds. How long have they been going on? 12 days? Please, if you don't know, you might want to do some research on the directed energy weapons scalar technology, the use of scalar waves, how they can produce winds. Okay, so this is uh, the latest that I could find on, what is it, NBC4, their California wildfires page to keep you updated. Let's listen to this. More evacuations ordered due to Thomas Fire. 250,000 acre fires now threatening more homes. Let's go to Tony Gideon right now with the latest. Tony. 
Uh, good morning. Just in the past 30 minutes, all of the flames we saw here along Grand Avenue have been replaced by smoke, but the Thomas fire can flare up without notice. For that reason and the red flag conditions, last night the mandatory evacuation order was reissued for residents in the area bordered by Sespe Creek, Burson Ranch, the Los Padres Forest, and the Fillmore City limits. The Thomas fire is now just over 252,000 acres. It is 35 percent contained. Uh, Coming back live here, people asked to clear the way for any emergency vehicles. I'm Tony Kinyar, reporting live from Fillmore 4, today in L.A. Okay. Um, what else? We begin with this breaking news. Firefighters battling a new fire tonight. Occidental College, just as the winds kick up again. NBC. Okay, they got that contained at Occidental College. Oh, wow. I think... Our former President Obama went to Occidental College. Here, smoke spotted not far from place lilac fire started. So, the smoke was seen under a bridge on the, under the northbound side of Interstate 15 at State Route 76 near Bonsall, Bonsall? Shortly after noon, people reported seeing smoke, but not flames. But um, red flag warnings. Red flag warnings as of today. Your governor in California, he said it right out. We will be firefighting at Christmas. So, will they actually keep these fires going for 10 more days? That's a stretch. If they did, maybe Californians would begin to ask some questions. But here, as communities in Southern California deal with one of the largest wildfires in state history, as some Northern California communities begin picking up the pieces from similar fires in October, these conditions are causing major concern. Cal Fire officials warned the next massive blaze could start with just one spark. One spark, guys, and you've got a massive blaze. All it does take, honestly, is a spark this year. That's from the Cal Fire spokesperson, Scott McLean. One spark and off we go. One spark and off we go. Because of your dry conditions, your Santa Ana winds. No mention of the geoengineering. No mention of weather modification. Just one spark. And there you go. You're up in flames. I want to show you this document. The State of California, the Resources Agency, Department of Water Resources, Weather Modification Operations in California. October 1, 1963, through September 30, 1964. It was published May 1965. And who was the governor? Jerry Brown's father. Jerry Brown's father. All right. Um, I want you to listen to just a few minutes of this. Uh, my name is Ron Lane, and I'm a Deputy CIO for the County of San Diego. Um, the County of San Diego has gone through a very rough day today with these uh, uh, very destructive fires that are uh, going through the North County of San Diego today. Um, today, this press conference is designed uh, to give our residents an update. Uh, this is a very important press conference. I want to uh, emphasize to everybody listening, especially those in North County, uh, there's important things that you need to be prepared for this evening. We are nowhere near the end of this. Uh, there are going to be more evacuations. Uh, there are thousands of homes that are within the path of these fires. 
Yeah. I want to stop this. There should beg questions. How is it that this fire is burning down this house and nothing around it? I know that all of you see this and it strikes you as odd and certainly this is um, not a wildfire. Why do they keep calling these things wildfires? Because they seem to be very precise, not wild. Burning down homes and yet nothing is touched surrounding it. I have to wonder if these homes are being destroyed by smart meters. They, smart meters, they can start fires, but these fires are um, so intense very, very quickly. So could they be deliberately shooting in these pulses of energy into these homes by their smart meter, via the smart meter, and taking them out. I don't know. And anybody who is stating things definitively in terms of how this is happening, I do not understand that um, because there's so many methods in which they could, they could, you know, target these homes. So while we may not have a definitive answer as to what is the method that they are using, what we can say definitively is that these areas, areas are being targeted deliberately. And every resident needs to take this very seriously and be prepared to take care of themselves and their families. This is the time for neighbors to help neighbors. We have an outstanding effort of first responders doing what they can, making heroic effort against these extremely dangerous fires with unprecedented uh, winds that we've never seen in the month of December before. Uh, but we need the help of uh, all our residents. Uh, so to give uh, an update on the current status of the fire, I'm going to invite Chief Dave Nissen from Cal Fire who gives the current status. Thank you. Good evening. I'm um, going to give an update on the lilac incident. Uh, it started this morning at approximately 11.27 hours um, at Highway 15 and 76. It's burning at an extremely rapid rate of spread um, westerly on the 76 corridor, uh, impacting the communities of Vista and soon to be Oceanside. Uh, currently, it is 2,500 acres with no containment. CAL FIRE is in unified command with the following agencies, the San Diego County Sheriff's Department, North County Fire Protection District, Vista Fire Department, Oceanside Fire Department. Currently, we have 20 structures that have been destroyed. I expect that that number will go higher and we'll provide that to you as information comes in to us. Um, we approximately have 700 firefighters engaged in fire suppression activities. Military assets from the Navy and Marine Corps have been requested, and we expect that they will be um, in the air tomorrow morning after briefing. Um, this evening, we will employ night flying uh, aircraft from both the city of San Diego and Kern County, which have sent uh, assets uh, to the Lilac incident. Uh, and lastly, uh, we did have two civilian burn injuries today that uh, have been transported to local burn uh, hospital. You know, you. Um, this was posted today, California Lilac Fire Press Conference aerial close-ups. I'm not even sure if this was a press conference today. Because I have not come across any any articles that are saying that the lilac fire now is raging again. This is the Thomas Fire Community Meeting. 
Uh, I will start tonight by uh, introducing uh, from the unified command system we have here, uh, CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 4, Deputy Incident Commander Jeff Pemberton. Good evening. We'll give you a brief uh, update on the incident size and percentage contained. Currently, we're at 242,500 acres. 30% contained and still over 8,000 personnel. It's with heavy heart tonight that I am saddened to announce the firefighter fatality on the Thomas incident. We can confirm that Cal Fire engineer Corey Iverson from the San Diego unit of Cal Fire lost his life while bat battling the Thomas fire. The San Diego unit of Cal Fire, Cal Fire Incident Management Team 4 Cal Fire Local 2881, along with Cal Fire leadership statewide, are currently working to support Corey, Corey's family, as well as his, as his firefighter family. More details will be made available as soon as they are confirmed. Join me in keeping our, <clears throat> excuse me, fallen firefighters, his loved ones, in your prayers and thoughts as we work through these challenging conditions. I would ask now that in honor of Corey, that we take a moment of silence in remembrance of him. Thank you. I will link below to this. This was posted yesterday. I have to say that I'm going to have to do more research about this lilac fire to find out if this was a fire uh, press conference today. Just because it was posted today, it doesn't mean that it is from today. And I would like to say to all those who upload videos regarding these fires that are current, that are still raging, when they say that San Diego is now a red flag community, Northern California, red flag warnings that when you upload if you're uploading videos that are dated and not current could you please put that in your title if the press conference was today okay if the press conference was from a later date then please put the date in the title. So, I do want to say that I apologize for showing this. I'm not doing this video over. Um, I did believe that it was for today, but listening to him, I, I'm not even sure now. So, I don't want anybody to be worried, especially when you have these red flag warnings. And I will look into it and if it was not from today, I will be posting another video. So all of these, all of these videos and articles I will link to below. Yes, a firefighter has died, another one. I believe that's two firefighters have died. They're still claiming only one citizen has died. But when you think about all of these fires still raging, all of the wildlife that is suffering. Here, One Pacific Redwood posted this yesterday, showing once again how they are preventing rain from coming in to the southwest. And you can listen to a few minutes here. Jane, is it Tandy? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. More fire and chemtrail updates. And this was posted just three days ago. But look at the sky in Southern California. Do you think if I stand here with this at the top of this hill, anyone will notice? Because nobody seems to be noticing this horrific scene 
of a sky and people's ignorance. I feel like I'm becoming like Bill Cooper. I just can't be nice to these people anymore. I'm sorry how people can look at this and not know that something's wrong. That goes to a new level of stupidity. My God, this is horrific. We are under severe assault. Listen to him. He'll tell you. How you doing, Olive? Huh? You don't look too well. You look kind of like how I feel. And how my daughter's been feeling, thanks to this. That's all they have to do, right? Get to a child? Yeah. That's all they need to do. Okay. Um, I said Southern California. I think that is where uh, Jane lives. But in watching the video, now I'm not entirely sure. It could be Arizona. I am sorry. I, you know, I'm kind of mixing things up with so many of those on YouTube in the cyber world, so I do apologize. Um, but here is Jane talking about, I believe, her daughter getting sick. And one of the reasons why I included this video was because I am hearing from so many of you who are getting sick subscriber in Dallas showed me these horrific videos and I'll show it to you right now. This is Dallas. This is my computer. Come on. Yeah, I'm hearing from a lot of you who are having computer problems. Her son, 26 years old, complaining of being so tired, exhausted, What are we going to do here? I, I don't I don't see any way out of what we are experiencing without more Americans. I don't even want to say waking up. I, it, developing an awareness of their surroundings. Acknowledging that this is not normal recognizing that these are not contrails and recognizing the frequency patterns in this cloud substance that is manufactured. All of these frequencies along with all of this toxic aerosol spraying is unfortunately killing off life including human life. And I do have to wonder if they're blasting areas that are in the mega region zone to keep us from being able to fight any of this. I'm not myself. I feel like hell every single day. I hear from others that they're certainly getting it. 
but there are people who are not within the mega region zones it seems to be a little bit less I don't know that that's just a thought um, nothing that I can support with evidence I'm so messed up I just turned on the wrong street can you believe it okay sorry for the uh, dark picture I'm driving home ah. and I just got another call from my daughter she's in pain again okay i want to ask is there anyone else out there this is a little suspicious my teenage daughter had a friend in high school who has been in the hospital now for i guess it's going on six weeks it's at least a month couldn't keep any food down something wrong with his stomach now my girl has spent Friday night in the ER and all day Saturday in the ER for stomach pain. And I mean stomach pain that makes her scream in pain, not just a little old tummy ache. This is making her scream in pain. They've done every test. They can't find anything. Nothing is wrong. Nothing's wrong with her appendix. Nothing. It is. So. As I was saying before, I got a call that interrupted this. Does anyone else have any sick children or grandchildren? I don't have any grandchildren yet, even though I might look like I do. Um, and there seems to be something that involves the stomach. Something's causing her pain, severe pain, not just a tummy ache. This is worse. If anybody else knows, similar symptoms, something with the stomach, low grade temp, 99.4, doesn't go really any higher than that. It hit 100 once a couple of days ago. Let me know. Okay. There are an awful lot of people who are experiencing symptoms and right before that clip that I just showed you, she said the doctors didn't know what it was. Of course she's worried. It's her daughter. So, if you, if you have yourself experienced what she's talking about, or if you have children who are experiencing anything simil similar, please click on the link below to this video and leave Jane a comment. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And I do apologize for um, the length of my videos. I do apologize for not checking out this video. I, Because of the red flag warnings that I was seeing and then this coming up on December 15 press conference, I just assumed that it was today, but I am not sure if it is today. So I will check that out. All of you in California. All of you, my subscribers, leaving comments. You in Northern California who are leaving comments, who are very, very concerned, who are very aware of what is taking place in your state, and you're worried about whether or not you are going to be next Don't think that you're having some paranoid thoughts. You're not. What we are seeing in California is deliberate. We know it. You can just look at these so-called wildfires that are not wild. 
right here. And in fact, I'm going to take the time to pause you and get another video. Ron Johnson. I can't believe that I can't remember any channel names. But yes, Ron Johnson, who I had subscribed to, but uh, that was Kafka Winston World. Um, I will link below to he talking about the California fires. Yes, the most selective forest fire, the wildfire. It's a wildfire in California. And look at all of these homes gone. And look at all of the trees surrounding it. The grass completely untouched. In the backyard, in the front yard. And people aren't questioning this. There was another, well, I can't, there's no, uh, here. <laughs> really? Really. Do you see? Do you see what I see? Do you see that this wildfire is extremely precise? Just getting the homes? All right. I will link below to everything. Very upsetting to see this occur. You know, people leave comments about, oh, Californians, the libtards, all of that crap. From what I've heard from subscribers who live in Ventura, it's a very conservative Christian area. Um, but... <laughs> Anybody who could who could be pleased that these fires are going on, they're just sick, sick, damaged souls. California, California has more, as far as I'm concerned, California has more people who are aware of what is taking place and more people who are actively fighting every agenda that we are all having to suffer the consequences of. So anybody who could be pleased that California is on fire. No. <laughs> Californian, California, you know, has such a diverse population. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to find the words to say in terms of how I feel about what's going on there. All of my subscribers who are having to live this, they're in the area of the Thomas Fire, they're in San Diego. They're in Northern California. I'm just so sorry. And I don't know about anybody else, but I sure do have you guys on my mind every single day, hoping to God that no more of you have to suffer these consequences.